Happy Sabbath! Oh my goodness, it is outstanding to see so many interesting faces. I like it when you, you, you just show up and, and I don't know you and, and I, I get something new on a Sabbath. That, that's, that's, just, that's just a wonderful Christmas gift. So, so thank you. If, you. if you thought that by coming to church today you were giving yourself a gift, just know too that you're giving, giving me one too. So, thank you. I have to direct our attention this morning to a prince. Now, you would think that I'd be talking about a special prince. Well, all princes think that they are special. You disagree? You disagree. Some, some think they're special, but we know that they're maybe not so special. But the prince that I'm thinking of this morning had a mother named Diana. Have you seen this prince in the news? Diana gave birth to two sons. One is now William and has chosen a bride, Kate Middleton. Um, we here in America, uh, we have a different royalty. Uh, name, name another, n name an American royalty. Kardashian. He's, he's from Glendale, the capital of the uh, Armenian world. And uh, Kardashian, any name ending in I-A-N, is probably Armenian. So just, just know that. So, yes, famous. How, how, how did her, her daddy become famous? Another royalty. He was the juice, remember? Us older guys, we remember when he was one of the famous in the football arena. William married Kate. And very recently, as in the last two weeks, his younger red-headed brother, and I have two red-headed brothers, his younger red-headed brother has also decided to take a bride. We are congratulating Harry this morning in his choice of Meghan Merkel. No, you haven't been to the grocery store recently? You haven't seen the tabloids? There she is, otherwise known as one of the uh, legal assistants and soon-to-be lawyer on the series called Suits. She lives in Toronto because that's where they film Suits. She is a very interesting young lady who, I believe, took the right course of study in school. You went to school this week, some of you. Some of you wished you hadn't because you had exams, but really we want those exams because then we get to show how smart we are, right? And when the teacher gives you an A+, plus, you're very, very happy, right? Kids, can I get an amen from the kid choir? Amen. amen. A+, plus. we want that A+. Plus. She has taken a degree from Northwestern in international relations. Didn't she choose right? I mean, she's going to be a princess in another country now because of marrying Prince Harry. You think Harry is just a regular kind of name? Just remember that Harry is the nickname game given to Henry VIII. Remember that famous guy? He was a prince once to Henry VII. Then he became Henry VIII, and he was so well-liked and such a superstar in his day, they nicknamed him Harry. So there are pubs in England called the King Harry, and I used to drive past there every day on my way to school from St. Albans to Watford in England. His mother, though, is the person who I would like us to also look at, and that is Diana, because you see, she was an ambassador for the healing of the wounds of war. If you didn't know this about Diana, you do today, that she died on the same day as another famous lady, but all the attention was paid to Diana as Mother Teresa breathed her last. 
same day. Diana was the one who was involved in landmine and the people who had been destroyed in their lives, their bodies destroyed by landmines that were thrown into their country from planes in the form of pens and little kids' toys and other things that would cause people to reach down and pick up this destructive device. There are countries in this world, my friends, that still have landmines from wars long ago. So when we lost Diana, there had to be another person who came along. And fortunately, she became very good friends with Queen Noor. You like my Arabic pronunciation? Queen Noor, Queen of the Night, married King Hussein of Jordan, another well-trained American woman who was noticed and got to know a prince and then married a prince. Queen Noor is still alive. King Hussein has passed away, but she has been involved with the same demining of the world because her friend died. And she picked up that torch. She is on the board of commissioners for the International Commission on Missing Persons. We're going to talk about that in a moment. She is an advocate for the anti-proliferation campaign called Global Zero. No nukes. That's what Global Zero is after. She received in 2015 the Woodrow Wilson Award from the United States for her public and I would say international public service. And she is still on the board of the King Hussein Foundation. Why do I, why do I mention these individuals? Well, these two ladies married princes. So now it's Meghan Merkel's turn to see what it's like to marry a prince. So now Harry, son of Diana, is engaged to Meghan. We will see what happens. Will, will Harry and Meghan take up the humanitarian torch that his mother laid down? Uh, here we are at Advent, and uh, we do this in our church. We, we remember things with colors so that you can associate colors with certain seasons. We have lit two candles out of the four candles. We're dealing with four words this month. The first word was hope. Thank you. The second, today's word, is peace. Hope, peace, two candles. So this is the text. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The Messiah, the Christ, is called the Prince of Peace. Do you think that was a mistake? Do you think that that was just a nickname? No, my friends, it was on purpose. It was on purpose. The plan was and is to redeem the lost children of God. To redeem them, to, to find them, to bring them back. God sent Jesus to find missing persons in his galaxy. So like Diana and Queen Noor, he sent the Prince of Peace because these persons had gone over the hill to a far country. Remember that story? Maybe today it will have new meaning as we think of the Prince of Peace. That group of individuals that are now considered missing persons squandered their inheritance Disaster after disaster, uh, uh, fires and floods came and struck their country and their place. But even so, very few remembered where they had come from. They were God's lost children. John chapter 3 verse 17 says, So God sent forth His Son into the world not to judge, 
So I want you to know at, at Advent, at this moment, part of the good news that I have for you this morning is that God did not send Jesus the first time to be our judge. But he sent him into the, that the world, that the lost children might be saved. Saved, I tell you. Saved! We're saved! You don't feel that because you may not realize it, but right now you're drowning. They tell me that, that not having a cigarette after smoking for 10 years is like drowning. That's what you feel like. I've been under the water. In fact, I was being held under the water. And thank God I have strong legs because I was able to fight off my friend who was holding me under the water. And I was able to push my way to the surface where I could take a breath of air. But I'm telling you, in that moment, you feel panic. You feel amazing uh, 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 desire to get a breath of fresh air. And when you do, you realize you are saved. You're going to live. I want you to capture that feeling if you have ever had that feeling. I want you to connect with that feeling this morning and know that because Jesus came and because he was born, we are saved. We can breathe. You, we use all these words and yet we don't take, take them to heart. We are inspired. That's what we call it, right? Inspiration and expiration. We breathe today, my friends, because Jesus came and because he gives us life. He brings us into direct contact. That's his job. He, he brings us into direct contact with heaven. I believe peace is the only way. And I'm not stumping to be Mr. America or Miss America. Peace is the only way. The plan, you see, called for a prince of peace to come. Isaiah links the name Prince of Peace with Mighty God, Everlasting Father. John says, like we learned last week, he was there at the beginning. Jesus is God. The plan was, let's get back together with our missing children. That's why he came. Now the Prince of Peace is our Prince of Peace. He's come to rescue his bride-to-be. Hence, he is ours. And he is our peace. He's coming, not only future, but he has come. And his sacrificial life, death, and resurrection <laughs> provides the crossing. Don't you love that pun? Come on. You like that pun? Jesus' life, death, and resurrection provides a crossing provides a crossing. We need that cross to get back to our Heavenly Father. I believe it's amazing. I believe it's confounding. I believe it's quirky. I believe it's symbolic. And like we will sing at the end of the service, it is silent. These are the words that spring to my mind when one contemplates the entrance of Yeshua made into our world. From highest heaven to th uh, the throne room of God, the eternal, to feeding trough. To feeding trough. Feeding box for his own animals. From the Father's right hand to the handmaiden of the Lord, Mary, Joseph's wife. From commander-in-chief of the heavenly hosts to gooey gurgler gazing up at his mother's face. Don't think that Jesus came in all nice and sweet and smelling just like... No, he came like every other baby. He was gooey. And he gurgled. And he cried. Just like all of you. 
a few years ago. But now you're big boys and big girls and you don't remember that. Amazing that we still, we still have as our reaction to this event, silence. You see, I feel that when we contemplate what God did and how he did it, all we are is dumbfounded. There's nothing we can say. It's beyond our comprehension. It's beyond our ability to comment. Because you see, he is our Prince of Peace. No wonder the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, put on the shoes. Get this? I'm into shoes. Lots of people into shoes. Put on the shoes of readiness to share. Hyphenated. Readiness to share. The Apostle Paul says, put these shoes on. Share what? Share what, you say? Share the good news, the good news of great joy. Our prince has come and we are saved. He will throw his cloak of righteousness over our tattered clothes. He will put shoes of readiness on our feet. He will put a ring on our finger and he will usher us into the banquet hall. Do you see how that story Involves all of us. But we've got to want to go there. We've got to want to come home. Because you see, that which was lost has been found. That which was dead is now alive because Jesus has made it alive. If you feel that way today, just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making me alive again today. I say, hallelujah. Praise him for being our Prince of Peace.